Hello! <laughs> Welcome to an adventure. Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, let me start the captions. I'm uh, just slightly behind today. Um, also, welcome Raiders! Hi Eric, thanks for bringing over the whimsies. Welcome to um, Archival Adventures. This is the show that I do on Wednesdays here um, on both the VTUL Studios Twitch channel and my personal channel, Rogan27. Uh, this is live from Virginia Tech University Libraries and I share items from our special collections in University Archives. So welcome in. Um, <laughs> I've been having some sound issues this morning, which if you're coming from Eric's stream will sound really familiar uh, in that sound channels aren't working properly. So I have music going to you. I have voice going to you, but I don't get any of the music in my ears. So I won't know if a song sounds completely inappropriate for what we're looking at today. Uh, <laughs> So anyway, uh, let me say hello. Um, Key Squared, thank you for being here and letting me know that my mic was hot uh, before we even started. Um, DJ Phoenix, welcome in. Uh, Subby Doby, hi, <laughs> welcome. I do have just a couple of short announcements before we begin, but we will be looking at um, more materials related to the history of the backyard barbecue. Um, we have an extensive history of food and drink collection here at Virginia Tech. Um, hi, Fluidan. Um, and so we've been going through cookbooks. We started in like the 1890s and we're up to 1954, uh, kind of just exploring the history of backyard barbecuing through cookbooks. Um, and that's kind of what we're doing in July. Um, hi, Hannah. <laughs> Um, yeah, and if, if everything is just really loud, hopefully you can turn it down on your end. If there's a misbalance between me and the music or something like that, do let me know. Um, it's, it's kind of still a one person show here. Um, before we begin uh, diving in on the cookbooks, just a couple of acknowledgements that I do because I am at a, um, public land grant institution, and I think it's important to do these kinds of acknowledgements. I want to acknowledge that the Tudelo and Monacan people are, um, are the traditional custodians of the land on which we work and live here and recognize uh, their continuing connection to the land, water, and air that Virginia Tech consumes. I want to pay respect to the Tudelo and Monacan nations and to their elders past, present, and emerging. I also want to acknowledge that Virginia Tech's Blacksburg campus was previously the site of the Smithfield Plantation, and at any point from 1774 to 1865, the Preston family enslaved 40 to 100 African men, women, and children uh, on this land. I want to pay respect to those souls and acknowledge that Virginia Tech is undeniably tied to this legacy. Um, further, I want to acknowledge that Virginia Tech's Blacksburg campus was previously the site of the Solitude Estate, which enslaved at least 30 African men, women, and children on this land and acknowledge the contributions of the Fraction family and other enslaved persons in the creation and emergence of Virginia Tech as a major land-grant university. So thank you for uh, giving me a moment to make those important acknowledgments. Hi, Castabras. Um, with that, I would like to go ahead and open up on 1954. Um, we are in the cookbooks. 1954, James Beard's Complete Book of Barbecue and Rotisserie Cooking. So if you've been with us the past couple of weeks, um, we started off in the 1890s and everything to do with backyard cooking was camping related. It was, there wasn't really backyard cooking. It was outdoor cooking and it was a designed for people who were going to be camping or on long treks. Like they literally had instructions on how to build stone fireplaces for your camp. Uh, they assumed you had somebody, uh, some sort of hired help or uh, labor along with you to carry everything that you were going to be using or uh, like it, if you've ever seen like movies of people going out into the into the bush and they had 
a wagon train behind them, essentially. It was that kind of like, oh, you're going to pack all of these things, go and build yourself a fireplace, and live out there in tents for a couple of weeks while you're hunting or doing stuff like that. Not kind of like what we think of as like the Boy Scout camping trip, where you've got to carry everything in a pack on your own back. Um, it was that kind of camping cookbooks. Um, and then as we got into like the World War II era, we started to see stuff geared towards people who were going to be cooking on a coal grill in their backyard. Um, so that's where we're at now. And uh, we did take a glance at this James Beard book at the end of stream last week. Um, you can see the 1950s uh, illustrations here. If you've got um, a favorite backyard grill recipe that you would like me to look for, I'm happy to look. Um, just let me know in the chat. Uh, but I may try to gear towards stuff that's really exotic, like, wow, I never thought I would see something like that, uh, like when we came across the recipe for, um, for skunk meat. Um, but also, I want to make sure that I'm looking at hamburgers and hot dogs, which are kind of the standard uh, grilling fare today. Um, so in here, there's recipes for hamburger, plain hamburger, herbed ham hamburger, uh, cheesed hamburgers, which I guess we would call cheeseburgers, Mexican hamburgers, hamburger cheese sandwich, hamburger and eggplant, and corned beef burgers. Apparently in the 50s, they didn't believe in capitalization in titled sections. Uh, yeah, DJ Phoenix, I don't know why they're all lowercase. Um, even the title of the book is lowercase. Complete book of barbecue and rotisserie cooking. The only word that appears, or the only words that look like they're capitalized are uh, Jim Beard's name and the word cooking. <laughs> Mexican hamburgers. To one pound of hamburger, add one small green pepper and one onion, both chopped, one tablespoon of chili powder, one tablespoon of chili sauce, and salt and pepper to taste. Mix well, form into cakes, and cook as above. Uh, variation, serve plain hamburgers covered with chili con carne. Um, so the Mexican hamburgers seem to just be hamburgers with chili powder, chili sauce, and some green pepper. Because I think there's onion in the regular hamburgers. Maybe not. Um, let's see. I think we had found frankfurters. There's a whole section on frankfurters, which um, are the hot dogs. But, you know, they had to be fancy about it. But it's just one chapter. They have a little illustration of, of sausages linked together. Um, kind of puts them down. We read through this last week, and honestly, they're just various ideas of what you can do with hot dogs, and they all seem less imaginative than what I can go over to a restaurant on Main Street here uh, called 622 North and get there. Like, these are... 11 different ways of making hot dogs, except that they're kind of only multiple, like kind of only like two or three different ways of making them with various suggestions for toppings. Uh, which to me, I was, I was surprised that it wasn't a little bit more imaginative with the variations on hamburgers that they give. Um, then we get like various chicken stuff. This is also has like, it says on the, the cover rotisserie suggestions. Um, so I'm not 
going to dive too much into those because that's not really what we're looking for. We're looking for backyard grilling and rotisserie really isn't that. Um, but yeah, I just thought it would be good to kind of show this one again real quick. Uh, we did look at it last week though, so I'm going to switch away from it pretty quickly here. And we're going to go to another Jim Beard book, because it's the next one chronologically that I have. Jim Beard's Complete Cookbook for Entertaining. 489 tested recipes and menus for every occasion, parties, buffets, holidays, brunches, picnics, snacks, dinners. Um, and I don't know why I said buffet. It's buffet. At least I learned it as buffet. Um, and we have this lovely little yellow slip in here because this is a new acquisition that has not yet been cataloged. Um, basic equipment for good entertaining. Copyright 1954. I agree, DJ Phoenix, this book as a book, seems like it is much more uh, general purpose. I'm just going to look and see what it might have on outdoor cooking in it. Um, so we have tips on entertaining, buffets and luncheons, brunches, cocktail parties, dinners for VIPs, foreign menus, holidays and birthdays. I still am not seeing anything particularly outdoor cooking related. I'm going to check and see what the index has to say. Um, brunches, champignons, Florentine noodles. I don't know that it has anything about outdoor. That's really interesting because Today, I, I can check holidays and see, um, but a general purpose cookbook today will have stuff on grilling. Um, this does not have a section on grilling. I'm looking for like, there's not, there's not a section for beef. Let me find meat, meats, beef. Beef bones, beef bourguignon, roast beef, beef rolls, ham. It does not have anything on frankfurters or hamburgers, according to the index. Uh, same year as the grilling book, it seems like maybe they just sausage grilled. Page 101, thank you. I will, let's go there and see. Old fashions and grilled sausages. We're s actually in the um, holiday section here. Since this is a holiday, make the old fashions big and hearty. Um, I'm looking for stuff on the sausages though. Even though a rich dinner is to follow, you can still enjoy something festive and autumnal with the drinks. Grill small sized pork sausages and pass them with, so that's looking at like the little Vienna sausages um, is what it's suggesting there, honestly. Um, definitely not outdoor grilling stuff. This is really interesting to me that this, this cookbook from the same famous chef um, released the same year as the actual like outdoor grilling cookbook has no outdoor grilling content in it. Easter breakfast, we had Christmas, 4th of July picnic. We have a section on 4th of July picnic. Um, cocktails, 
stuffed roasted chickens, stuffed eggs, onion sandwiches, tomatoes, greens, cucumbers, olives, cheese and crackers, pickles, angel food cake, fruit candies, chilled rosé wine, and coffee. So, 4th of July picnic number one, not a grill, not, not a backyard grilling picnic. 4th of July picnic number two, though, this is a picnic menu that is about as typically American as you can get. Hot dogs, potato salad, and watermelon. But in each case, something special has been added to turn this simple food into gourmet fare. Uh, frankfurters in hot rolls, horseradish, curry, and mustard sauces, potato salad with artichoke hearts and tomatoes, watermelon in champagne, and coffee. Yeah, Hannah, I wonder if that is the case, that um, all the grilling stuff was in one book and he, th they didn't want them to compete. You were supposed to buy both books. Um, the logical thing is to serve champagne right through this meal. But if some of the family insists, have ice-cold ale or beer. Frankfurters in hot rolls. Buy the tiny finger-sized franks. Then hunt up a good bakery where you can get those little napkin-shaped rolls made from regular Parker House dough. They're just the right size and shape for the small franks, and they're yeasty and tender when heated. If possible, do the frankfurters on a charcoal grill. Have the rolls piping hot and well buttered. Let each guest choose the sauce he wants. We've got a um, specific call out to Parker House Dough. Uh, so I believe that that would be a brand name suggestion there. Um, honestly, I'm not an expert on these things. I'm just going to double check. Aha! So it is a style of dinner roll. Uh, they're called Parker House Rolls because they first originated in the 1870s at the Boston Parker House Hotel. Um, so it's a style rather than a brand name. Yeah, they're like the dinner rolls that you get at the grocery store. Like if... Um, uh, so, if you're in the U.S., you would have the referent of our Thanksgiving meal, our harvest meal in the fall. Um, and they're just like a basic little dinner roll. They're maybe like two inches by two inches. In, like, they're like a little, little puff. And so, he's suggesting small so, uh, small sausages, rather than like full-length hot dogs. Um, he says finger-sized. Uh, so a small like dinner roll would I guess be big enough for those small sausages instead of like having an actual like hot dog bun. Yeah, so I, I'm picturing like a, a Vienna sausage in a, in a dinner roll is what he's suggesting for this picnic. Not, I think, what we would expect for hot dogs at uh, a cookout today. <laughs> but then again, this is James Beard. Um, so kind of celebrity chef, uh, one of the original celebrity chefs, um, not going to give us what the everyman would come up with. It's interesting that that complete book of entertaining had really just one tiny little bit about outdoor grilling. Here I have a, a book called Barbecue Cooking, a Sunset Booklet. Um, I'm uncertain what the smear is on the book itself. Jim Beard was the Guy Fieri of the 1950s. I do believe you are correct. Uh, 
So I don't know, it looks like it might be, based on context, I would imagine some sort of um, fluids from like handling raw meat or something like that that has been dried on there for some time. But I don't know, it could just be paint. I'm not gonna worry too much about it. It's dry and I'm just not gonna touch that part of the book. Um, this is from 1955. <laughs> And so it is barbecue, po barbecue cooking, a sunset booklet. Yes, Subi Doby, I do think you are correct that it is probably blood. Um, grape jelly from meatballs. That, that's totally possible, Kira, with that coloration. Honestly, it is still really red in color, which dried blood tends to be brown. So I would say grape jelly is actually probably a more likely suspect, but I don't know. I, I'm not going to worry too much about it. <laughs> what a weird conversation to walk in on. <laughs> oh dear. <clears throat> the beginning barbecuer will be generously loaded down. We were, we were talking about Parker House rolls just before you got here, Kira. Uh, because Jim Beard suggests that for a 4th of July picnic, you should have finger-sized hot, uh, finger-sized frankfurters grilled on a charcoal grill served on toasty warm Parker House rolls. <laughs> oh, you arrived for the Vienna sausages and rolls. Okay. <laughs> um. The beginning barbecuer will be generously loaded down with instructions by his experienced friends. He has no need to be discouraged by their apparent expertness, for the techniques are easily mastered. The novice should have no trouble once he learns how to control his fire, how to use barbecue equipment, how to cook which kinds of meat, and how to plan a meal. Uh, give some stuff on barbecue fire, charcoal fuel, paper kindling, pine chips, kindling sticks, various inflammable liquids such as alcohol, antifreeze, kerosene, diesel fuel, diesel fuel, white gasoline or commercially made lighter solutions. They recommend lighting your Grill fire with diesel fuel. Let me now say that I do not recommend trying that at home. Please take a care for your safety and only use actual grill lighter fluid if you're going to use grill lighter fluid and follow the instructions on the package. <laughs> also, uh, uh, Cavalier67, I'm just seeing 22 minutes ago, you followed. Thank you for the follow. And uh, Subby Doby, thank you for the follow <laughs> just now. Um, <laughs> no trouble once he learns how to control his fire. Sounds like advice for young dragon scouts. <laughs> step one, set car on fire. Step, step two, barbecue. Antifreeze would be just as bad, yes. <laughs> the era, yes, indeed, Lord Portico, it is the era of lawn darts. Um, it does say these solutions should be allowed to burn off completely, however. Otherwise, they may impart a disagreeable taste to the meat. Um, I will just say there are specific formulations that are manufactured and marketed today for the purpose of helping you light your grill fire. If you're going to use a liquid accelerant to light your grill fire, they make specific ones for that purpose that burn away quickly. They have instructions on the package about how much to use and how to apply it and how to be safe while doing so. So this information is from 1955. Do not take it at face value. Do not, do not, do not use gasoline or diesel fuel to light your barbecue. <laughs> Universal backpacking stoves can, can burn it. Um, that is interesting to know was not worth it.
But yeah, generally, generally no. <laughs> Unless it's specifically meant to run on it, don't do it. Croquet darts, heavy objects, and mallets. Oh, yeah. I'm reading that wrong, but I, I, I caught up. Um, once the charcoal starts to burn, it will usually form cooking coals in 45 to 75 minutes. Stuff on wood fuel, stuff on fire control. Um, how to barbecue beef. Fun fact, my dad used a sparkler to get his coals lit one time because we didn't have matches, but we had a lighter and he didn't want to get that close to the coals doused in lighter fluid. That is, I mean, they make really long matches for the purposes of light, like lighting fireplaces and things like that for a similar purpose. And if you've got sparklers, sparklers get really hot. And so if you're okay lighting the sparkler up close, it's a stick with fire on the end. So that's actually a really good um, adaptation. I still won't say that it's perfectly safe because sparklers do burn incredibly hot and should be handled with care. Um, but, and that's not what they're made for and I don't want to um, endorse using things not what, for what they're made for. But um, lighting something like a a small stick of kindling or something like that to then stick that into the center to light it up. Much better than having like just a tiny little lighter and trying to get in close with it. Um, only tangentially related. Recently read a mystery novel set in central Virginia involving an extreme, cro extreme croquet tournament, water hazards, and poison ivy. I mean, poison ivy is just basically, if you're in central Virginia, there's poison ivy. Um, but water hazards in croquet sounds really complicated. The sparkler worked surprisingly well, but would not recommend for daily use. Yeah. <laughs> it's best to use the recommended products because they've been tested and approved for a certain purpose, um, which is as close as you can get to being reliable on safety. Uh, Anyway, how to barbecue beef. <laughs> um, use tongs rather than a fork if you do not want to pierce the meat and let juices escape. Water pistol is excellent means of controlling flames when dripping fat causes flare up. Uh, this is not the first time we have seen a water pistol recommended for the purposes of controlling the flame uh, when fat is falling into it. Beef should be tops in quality, well marbled with fat, velvety in texture, fine in grain, and well aged. Steaks are the most popular barbecue cut. The proper way to broil them is a matter of raging controversy. Many cooks like to broil them quickly, searing them over a hot searing them over a hot fire or even slapping them on the coals. Other barbecuers prefer to broil slowly over a coolish fire. Recent research favors the slow school of broiling, but the beginner will probably want to try both techniques before choosing sides. Ground beef is an ideal item for the beginner to practice on and a memorable treat from the grill of an expert. It should not be too fat, but if it is too lean, it will crumble and fall through the grill unless it is held together with a binder, such as an egg. A trace of marrow often improves flavor. How to barbecue pork. <laughs> you gotta love that beef cooking controversy. Yes, yes indeed. Um, but you know what's more contentious than beef cooking? Barbecue pork. <laughs> You're getting hungrier for a burger minute by minute. Um, this month, as I've been doing these uh, barbecue related streams every Wednesday, I go home and I'm so hungry by the time I get home. Um, I finish the stream at 4.30 and I usually like to have dinner around like 7.30. I get home, it's like 5.30, I'm like, 
I am so hungry because I've just been talking about food for two hours. Um, <clears throat> to give pork spare ribs smoke flavor, cook under hood. Improvised tent of aluminum foil can substitute for a hood. Pork in its processed forms, bacon, tenderized ham, sausage, is more welcome to the barbecuer than unprocessed forms because it does not require the interminable cooking time that the fresh variety needs for safe eating. Leg of pork takes 8 to 10 hours on a spit. Exception. Fresh pork spare ribs are a perennial backyard favorite that can be tastily broiled on the grill, spit, or skewers, or roasted in the barbecue oven. Pork is loaded with fat and should be cooked over a low fire. Over hot coals cause the fat and flavor to cascade into the fire. <laughs> he squared. I kind of want to send a copy of this book to our fire protection engineering department just to enjoy he hearing them screaming. Diesel fuel, squirt water on grease fire. <laughs> I fully expected the promotion of Sweet Lady Propane. Oh, written by Hank Hill. Yes. Um, I, I don't know that we're to the point of propane yet. I don't know. I don't know when it became a popular backyard fuel source. This is 1955, and I don't know that I've seen propane grills really promoted in any of the books yet. Um, they're, they're definitely on to charcoal right now, though. Um, let's see, we have How to Barbecue Lamb next. You think they started propane, pro, pro, propane promotion in the 80s? Um, we will get there if I don't spend too much time on all of these. <clears throat> Let's see. So we got lamb. How to barbecue fish. So there was a lot of stuff on outdoor cooking of fish, and even like the camping cookbooks talked about breading and frying the fish. So I'm curious what this is going to say. Uh, trout and corn on the grill. Salmon fillets barbecued skin down without turning. Barbecuing trout campfire style. Fish, like fowl, are usually short on fat, and what little they have is so volatile that it vaporizes over coals that are too hot. By wrapping them with some fat in leaves, maple or any sweet variety, or aluminum foil, the barbecuer can keep them juicy. Fish also tend to stick to the grill, even one that is well greased, and they are easier to turn and handle if placed in a wire toasting rack. So be careful with your fish. Um, how to barbecue fowl. Using barbecue equipment. Broiling on the grill. We get some recipes for steak sandwich. Snoqualmie steak. And slice sirloin. <clears throat> I'm curious about this Snoqualmie steak. A quarter cup of butter. One clove of garlic chopped fine. One teaspoon of seasoned salt, quarter teaspoon of Worcestershire, top sirloin steak, one and a half inches thick. So I'm curious. It just says a teaspoon of seasoned salt. And to me, I, I read that and I'm like, what does that mean? What is seasoned salt as compared to salt? I'm not a chef. I'm not a cook. I don't know what that means. Um, the first portable gas grill was in 1954. So this was just a year later. Um, so yeah, um, 1960s, there was a propane grill. Don't know how popular it was. Found an article on Popular Mechanics entitled A Brief History of the Barbecue Grill. A salt that's mixed, yeah, but like, I get that it's salt that's mixed with something else when they just call for it as an ingredient, seasoned salt. I imagine there are different formulations. Like, how do you know which one to pick? 
Seasoned salt is a blend of table salt, herbs, spices, and other flavorings, and sometimes monosodium glutamate. Sold in supermarkets and it is commonly used in fish and chip shops and other takeaway food shops. So is it just like a common combination or are there different brands and they're all going to have a different mixture of herbs? I'm just... Lowry's. Um, yeah, that's one I'm... It tends to look orange. I wonder, does... Is like... So there is a standard formula. That's good to know, Kira. Different brands with preference varying by region. But there's a standard formula, so it's probably just different variations on that formula or concentrations that allow for the, um, the trademark of a certain formulation of it as a brand name. Old Bay. Okay, so Lowry's or Old Bay or something like that. Um, so that would be like, Old Bay, that's the stuff that goes on like crabs in Maryland, right? Okay, thank you for that. Like I, I, I bake, I don't cook. So when it gets to something like that and I see an ingredient like that, I'm like, I don't know what it means because I don't use stuff like that in the stuff that I make. Um, Old Bay is mainly a seafood flavoring. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought it, Old Bay was the, the I mean, yeah, you're, you're not wrong, Key Squared. Um, every year, for some reason, like, I genuinely enjoy Utz chips. If you're from the East Coast, you know the Utz brand. Um, they're a local, like, East Coast available brand of chips. Um, and they make, an, uh, they make a Maryland crab chip, which is just a potato chip with Old Bay seasoning on it. And I always end up buying them, even though I don't actually like them. It's just a thing. I grew up near Maryland, uh, and the Maryland crab chip is just something that I, I have to get every year, even though I don't actually like them. Because by the time a year passes, they sound amazing. They sound so good. And then I buy them, and I taste them, and I remember I don't like flavored potato chips at all. <laughs> but every year they get me. Every single year. <laughs> Cream cheese on old bagels, spelled B-A-Y-G-E-L-S, oh dear. <laughs> I have not had those before, but, um, yeah. Anyway, I was reading this recipe for Snoqualmie steak. Melt the butter, mash the garlic and salt together, add to butter with paprika and Worcestershire sauce, Now, I see a problem right away in that the instructions say the, the instructions say that you need to add um, paprika, and paprika was not in the list of ingredients. Um, as it broils, swab the upper side of the steak with the mixture. Turn the steak about four times during the cooking and swab each time with the butter mixture. While the steak is cooking, slice six or eight wiener rolls in half. Serve up the steak with potatoes that have been cubed raw, unpeeled, and fried with onions and salad oil. Then paint the rolls with the remaining sauce and toast them over the coals. Incidentally, over a forest camp stove, the slower and smokier the fire, the better the steak. Enough sauce for four servings. Figure on one third pound steak per person. <clears throat> yes, Kira, I... I I would expect that that's where it gets the orange color, that pap paprika um, is in seasoning salt. Um, but yeah. Um, Hannah, <coughs> if you're a, I, I'm going to recommend something. I don't know if you'll like it, but um, so I, my favorite, I think, it quite possibly DJ Phoenix, a, a, an editing mistake. My I believe my favorite um, Utz chip is the their um, sourdough specials, which are thin. They're, they're hard sourdough pretzels. I think they're my favorite. If you like pretzels at all, 
try the sourdough specials. Um, <laughs> and I mean, I grew up, so I, I had a neighbor who um, stocked shelves for Uts and always uh, would get to keep the Uts chips that um, had hit their sell by date. Uh, and so rather than just throwing them out, um, he got to take them home, which at the time, it was before salt and vinegar chips became really popular, so we got lots of salt and vinegar chips uh, <laughs> from my neighbor. Um, the next one, that, the next book that we have is uh, Better Homes and Gardens Barbecue Book, Complete How-To for Outdoor Cooking. Um, but the other thing I was going to recommend, they have a seasonal chip, if you like cheese balls at all, so like puffed corn chip that's in cheese, uh, they have what are, you'll find them either as baseballs, snowballs, uh, cottontails, or there's one more. They're, they release it once a season under four different brand names, but it's the same thing. It's just a white cheddar cheese ball. Um, that is probably one of my favorite of the chips that they make. <laughs> Since it's come up before, salad oil is any type of vegetable oil that is used in dressing salads. That is good to know. I think we had thought that it might be like olive oil or something. Um, but it, yeah, the oil part of oil and vinegar. So uh, here they have a lovely illustration of a kettle grill, a charcoal kettle grill. Um, <laughs> positioned much too close to that wooden picnic table um, with a ginormous piece of steak, some tomatoes on the grill, um, and a casserole dish full of potatoes that are not going to make crispy fries that way. So the food stylist here really doesn't know much about actual outdoor grilling. But it makes for an interesting uh, picture. And we have, I'm trying to get the side here, some illustrations on the inside of the um, dust cover. Both inside and this look this looks like an inside um, grill rather than an outdoor grill it looks like somebody grilling on their like fireplace or something um. all right let's see what we have uh, and what year this is from 1956 um, you can see this is where I got the illustration that I used la on last week's tweet um, so we're a little behind. Table of contents. That seems like a good place to start. Barbecuing is fun. Pages 7 through 16. Uh, fire building and equipment, meats, vegetables, salads, breads and sandwiches, desserts and appetizers, and beverages. Um, You're headed for a meal that's the best, says Dad. The easiest, says Mom. The happiest, say the kids who know. You ever pitched into? For what do we eat? For what do we eat? See the next nine pages loaded with ideas from tantalizing wide awake breakfasts to peaceful sunset suppers. Wait, you think your grandmother had that one? Th this book? I'm just now realizing that you were talking about the book. Because we were talking about chips. And for some reason I thought that comment was about the chips. But I th I'm now realizing that I think that comment was about the book. Real barbecue flavor. You can use your barbecue, backyard, fireplace, range, oven, or broiler, or, rotis or electric rotisserie. They really, they hired a food stylist for this. They really wanted to give 
pictures. It's, they've had a lot of illustration in, in the previous books, but we, we haven't really seen food styling to this degree in the cookbooks before this one. And what's more, they're trying to show off the food, but they sure do put people in weird positions to do it. Also, look at those outfits. Mid-50s. That dress is just something else. Nobody's barbecuing table ever looks like this. Uh, yes, I would agree. It's, it's definitely idealized. They have Rise and Shine Outdoor Breakfasts, Chef's Griddle Cake Breakfast, Dude Ranch Brunch, Sunday Brunch, or He-Man Breakfast Splurge. Tempt family and guests with a whiff of ham sizzling in the skillet. They'll come running without a call. Icy tomato or orange juice. Frizzled ham. Golden hominy scramble, uh, which apparently there is a recipe for that in here. Speedy donuts uh, for coffee dunking. Wait, bow and quiver on the ground? Was that... Oh, you are right. I didn't even, I saw that there was something there and I didn't recognize what it was. Like, yeah, this uh, suburban 50s dad definitely went out there, where, there with that bow and arrow to shoot whatever it is that they are uh, presently grilling up in this stylishly posh backyard grill. <coughs> It doesn't even mention it in the, so for building family memories, dad's the chef, sis and brother kibitz, pitch in on tasks their size. Have the time of their lives, no kitchen chores for mom. So selling it as, hey, let mom have a break, uh, which is nice. Also, except all the dishes, right? Um, Really kind of interesting to me that they use the word kibitz um, because it is a Yiddish word that not everybody is going to know. Um, in fact, I didn't know the meaning of it. It's a word I'm familiar with, but I didn't know the meaning. I just had to look it up. It means to look on and offer unwelcome advice, especially at a card game. Yes, barbecue, oh gosh, barbecue covered children to clean. <laughs> so I, uh, in my household, I famously do not like barbecue. Not because it doesn't taste okay, like generally acceptable. It's not my favorite, but I will, it would be extremely rare that I would actually want to go and get barbecue or have barbecue, etc. cetera. Um, and it's mostly because it's freaking messy <laughs> and I don't like messy foods. Um, this chapter three, this is the actual illustration I pulled for the tweet. Um, this is dad's domain. Sit back, mom, admire chef. He has the fascinating how to on big steaks, other juicy meats that take to charcoal. There's rotisserie roasting, cooking on skewers, grilling whole meals in foil, plus how to talk knowingly with the meat man. This book has an attitude. <laughs> and it is a 
A very sexist attitude. Honestly, not uncommon for the time period, I guess. And what's more, it has that attitude, but then if you look at the illustration here of the person preparing the meat um, and, and grilling it, the person in the images, who's, you see their hands and the apron, those are very feminine hands. I don't actually think that that is a man in those illustrations. <laughs> oh, Kira, uh, thanks for stopping by. Uh, have fun working. I say that with a question because you're overworked and absolutely should take breaks often and you deserve them and um, yeah. Cuts of beef, pork, lamb, broiled steak. So we're kind of getting a standard set of meats, beef, lamb, pork, uh, less so with the poultry, but they do usually have something. We have barbecued turkey. Got to have that Thanksgiving turkey done in the barbecue. No deep frying turkeys outdoors yet, thankfully, 1950s. Yeah, the, the um, illustration here with the cuts and showing kind of what part of the animal it comes from, as well as some actual pictures of what some of it actually looks like, even though the pictures are black and white because printing in color costs a pretty penny. Um, like for the pork here, you've got, it, it has the map. It t shows you that the Boston butt, um, which if you look at the beef, it'll also come across this way. The butt is actually from like the shoulder. Um, but apparently the butt, the picnic, that's a cut of meat that I'm not familiar with. Spare ribs, side, uh, ham, and loin for pork. And then it tells you selected barbecue meats from wholesale cuts. Uh, so Canadian style bacon, which is those little um, small discs of ham. Uh, I don't know if they're called Canadian bacon in other countries, which is why I'm trying to give a little, a, 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 they're just, um, well, here, here's an illustration. Uh, it's, it's like if you took a big long like loin of, pork and sliced it thin into little discs. Um, that is what Canadian style bacon is. Um, and it comes from the loin. Uh, so that or loin chops, Boston butt, uh, you get smoked shoulder butt. From the side, you get bacon. From the ham, you get uh, ham, surprisingly. Um, and from the spare ribs, you get spare ribs. It does not say in here what you get from the picnic. But yeah, I, I, they, in this book, they have a really good uh, kind of breakdown. So if you were new to this, weren't really familiar with kind of picking that out, um, I think they've done a really good job in this book of something that you could refer to and kind of learn from, which is pretty nice. All right, barbecued turkey, chicken, fish, burgers, tips for burger makers. Look for bright red color, some fat for flavor. If you have beef uh, ground to order, choose round steak, chuck, flank, sirloin tip. If meat is lean, have two or three ounces suet ground with each pound. Handle the meat lightly. The more gently you handle the patties, the more tender your burgers will be. 
result moist, extra fluffy burgers. Spread patties with soft margarine or butter before grilling. No sticking. No skillet. No broiler basket. Grids too widely spaced to hold burgers. Place sheet of aluminum foil on grill and proceed with your hamburger cookout. <clears throat> Turn the meat only once while broiling. No flipping back and forth. Chef's trick. See picture below. Pat out a thin burger polka dot with four or five bits of chipped ice in the center. <clears throat> Top with a second patty and press gently to seal edges. As burgers cook, the ice melts, steam forms. I mean, it's lovely that they tell you that that's what happens, but they don't actually tell you why that's desirable, which would be a good bit of information to include. Uh, for each pound of ground beef, use a half teaspoon monosodium glutamate. Just taste the difference. Um, it is really interesting to me, 40s and 50s, they started just recommending the inclusion of monosodium glutamate, which um, has a really bad reputation today, but isn't as bad as its reputation. Um, yeah, the 50s really pushed to MSG, but MSG itself is fine if you want to use it occasionally. Like, it is an ingredient, it is edible, it is safe to use, it is... It has a horrible reputation. <laughs> um... Let's see. Medium or coarsely ground meat gives a light textured burger. Makes for good eating. Give the burgers a break. Have warm or toasted buns or bread ready for the sizzling patties. When you're making burgers for the crowd, stack them up. All set for broiling. Just put wax paper between each layer. Wow, it's like my dad read this book. Because uh, <laughs> these are things he absolutely did. Um, here's a way to make hamburgers extra juicy. While the burgers sizzle over the grill, heat margarine or butter and Worcestershire sauce in a skillet at edge of grill. Three to four tablespoons each for four hamburgers. When the meat is broiled, put into skillet and turn once so that both sides are coated with the zippy sauce. Serve with sauce right from the skillet. Skillet helps keep the meat piping hot while being served. For burgers that travel, Take canned or packaged frozen hamburgers on your picnic. We have Ranch House Hamburgers, Paul Bunyan Burgers, Jumbo Beef Burgers, Cheeseburgers, Smoky Cheeseburgers. Country Club Hamburgers, Skillet Burgers, Double Decker Burgers, Deviled Beef Patties, Fiesta Hamburgers. Uh, and then we get... Um, Toppers, fresh chop chop, mustard butter patty, summer relish, confetti corn relish, cheese meat topper, pepper butter, savory onion relish, and a whole section on hot dogs. Kids of all ages, grown up kids too, love juicy frankfurters better than almost anything you can think of. So easy to fix, franks are good just heated. Even better when you dress them up with cheese or a sauce. The young chef in this picture above is grilling franks on one portable grill, toasting buns on another. Build charcoal fire inside special inset, put rack on top, and you're ready to broil franks in just 10 minutes. You can carry foods to picnics in these handy buckets. The lids double as trays here. Interestingly, they did not give us a brand name. So, not exactly product placement, uh, <clears throat> although it, it does read like an ad. We get All American Hot Dogs, Frankfurter Barbecue, Saucy Franks, Frank Fries, Barbecued Frankfurters, Cheese Pups, Hot Stuff. Why are the outsides covered in flammable f fabrics? Because it looks good. This is 1956. <laughs> what are Frank Fries? They're quick as scat, 
Look smart, taste good. Score Frankfurters. Making shallow, quarter-inch diagonal cuts one inch apart. Brown in skillet in a little hot fat, about one tablespoon, three to five minutes. Be careful not to overcook. See picture page 64. Aha. So it's just these ones that have little diagonal cuts across them. <clears throat> 1950s lawyers had not taken over the world yet. I think the marketers had taken over the world. Uh, cheese pups, Broncos, Bow Wow Bean Bake, which it says you should fix indoors and carry out. The Bow Wow Bean Bake is this one. And then how to keep foods hot outdoors. It's got like chafing dishes and other things like that that like seem like industrial to me rather than home cooked stuff. Stews. Mmm, cinnamon apples. And right now I'm trying not to sneeze. Um, all right, I'm not gonna spend too much time. We've hit the hot dogs, we've hit the hamburgers. Uh, there wasn't anything in the table of contents that seemed really out there. I'm going to move on to the next book so that maybe we can get out of the 50s today. <laughs> we have another new acquisition that we haven't cataloged yet. The ABC of Barbecue by Peter Popper Press. Um, from the illustrations on it, I think we're still in the 50s. With decorations by Muth McRae. The P Peter Popper Press, Mount Vernon, New York. Copyright 1957. To the reader, barbecue cooking is the simplest and most rewarding kind of cooking there is. It entails a minimum of preparation and a minimum of cleanup. And from the point of view of the host and hostesses, allows for the, or the host and hostess, allows for the maximum enjoyment of a party and its guests. A barbecue party can be formal if you like, but everyone is happiest when dirtiest. And blue jeans are a perfect costume for sitting on earth or stones and for absorbing charcoal stains and rich brown gravy. Whether your barbecue site is on a slick suburban terrace or in the great open outdoors, the recipes in this book will be helpful to you. Flavor them with your own particular brand of zest and hospitality and they will taste doubly delicious. Signed, the editor. The company sure loved its alliteration. One second. Um. Jeans are a costume. <laughs> uh, jeans were called a uniform here for a while. They were referred to as a uniform in the late 1970s because that's basically all that the students wore. Um, oh, it's because it's an ABC's book. That's why they love their alliteration. We've got Abracadabra, Abracadoo, what is more fun than a barbecue? Armenian shish kebab, Arizona steak barbecue, appetizer corn mush. This is maybe not the best way to organize a cookbook, uh, putting the recipes in alphabetical order, but I guess going with a theme, barbecue a suckling pig, a chicken, or a lamb, a fine exotic shish kebab, or an old Virginia ham. Oh, Peter Popper Press, yeah. Bay leaf steak, brandy steaks, biscuits, broiled fish, broiled steaks and chops, broiled sweetbreads, broiled hamburgers and frankfurters, baked potatoes. 
Cook of the evening, beautiful cook, with a bird in each hand, how, how, how handsome you look. Just going to flip through. I won't read all the recipes, but I will read the little letters, because there's only going to be 26 of them. Dig a dick, it dig, 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 dig a ditch and dig it deep, deep enough to roast a sheep. Which is an interesting um, rhyme when the only recipe under D is divine shrimp. Eat up the steak, drink down the beer, my appetite's keen in the spring of the year. Wiener Schnitzel. Fortune's always smiling, summertime is gay, a picnic in the open will drive your cares away. Are the captions doing something weird? I just glanced over and they seem really behind. Hmm. I'm gonna. I stopped them. And I have started them again, and we'll see if it makes any difference. They are definitely slower than normal. Um, they were ahead of, I mean, they're typically ahead of the audio. That's not, that, that's not unusual. Um, but they seemed really far behind when I glanced over there. Uh, garnish your dinner with laughter or joke, but the best of all seasoning is campfire smoke. We've got grilled hamburgers, grilled French bread, grilled bacon sandwiches, grilled tomatoes, but no grilled cheese sandwiches. I guess technically I've never seen a grilled cheese sandwich made on a grill. Hot dogs that sizzle and bubble and split make the simplest of outings a sure fire hit. So H has hamburgers. Interestingly enough, the rhyme is about hot dogs, but there are no hot dog recipes in the H section. <coughs> Well, this rhyme is definitely not. We will call it a historical document. Um, this phrasing would not be something we would want to use today. Indian summer is the season for maize when green are the evenings and golden the days. Um, so definitely, <laughs> definitely 1950s book. Emu lamb steaks. I don't know why they're called that. They're literally just lamb steaks. Jingle, jingle, go the spurs. Cowboy gather round. Cowboys gather round. Your banjos and your singing make a mighty purdy sound. Kings and fine princes have gone to the wall, but his majesty's f I read it the way that it should be, but it's not written that way. Kings and fine princes have gone to the wall, but his majesty food is still lord of us all. Oh, but his majesty food is still lord of us all. I got it. Let us assemble the driftwood and rocks. We'll build us a fire and roast us an ox. And now, 
Hot dogs in the L's for Liberty Franks. They apparently have apples. What? 12 Frankfurters, four and a half cups of juicy sauerkraut, three tablespoons butter, half a teaspoon of caraway seeds, three tablespoons of brown sugar, and three green apples. Melt the butter in a pan, saute the apples until brown. Remove and keep warm. Place the sauerkraut in skillet and sprinkle with caraway seeds. Add frankfurters. Put, apple, put apples cut side up on sauerkraut near the edge of skillet. Sprinkle the apples with brown sugar. Cover and simmer 15 minutes over a slow fire. Serves six. I don't know that I have any conception of what that dish would be like. Interesting. Mother, 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 put your pans away. No cooking for you, your queen for the day. Nobody, nobody cooks better than you in the great outdoors on a barbecue. Oh, for a sweet lamb or a suckling pig, my purse is small, but my appetite's big. Pick up sticks, light the fire, we're putting the calf on its funeral pyre. Oh my gosh, that one's a bit morbid. Quick, oh quick, the barbecue's done. Pour on the sauce and watch it run. Raise up your voices and sing us a song. The roast is a browning and it won't be long. Let's see. S. South of the border, down Mexico way, they fight with their bulls, but we eat them. Ole! Oh, jeez. Talk to me gently, handle with care, but feed me my steak, dear, bloody and rare. I may have gotten distracted by the fact that there are rhymes for every letter of the alphabet. Useless to argue, useless to tease, the sun will not blister us under the trees. Vanished... Vanished the... Nope. Nope, I'm just not reading that one. There was a rhyme for the letter V. <laughs> nope, that's not what it says was not worth it. It is the former name of the Washington football team is the word that's there. Um, and the rest of the rhyme doesn't get better. <laughs> so, not going to read that one. There was a rhyme for V. It was very offensive to indigenous people. <laughs> no, it, it's fine. It was not worth it. I just... It's not a good one. So, just not going to read that one. Welcome the guest with appetite good, especially he who cuts his own wood. And then we have X, Y, and Z all together. Uh, zest is the word to finish this book with the best of all wishes to, to the out of doors cook. Um, I feel like, I feel like they should have put in some effort and made one for X and Y. I'm guessing they didn't have any recipes that started with X or Y, and that's why they didn't, but anyway. <laughs> they, yeah, they, they, they just gave up for X and Y. I get, like, they had one for V. It was very offensive to indigenous people, uh, which 1957... American white culture, not really surprising that we came across that. 
Um, I was willing to go with the reference to a period of summer that is not actually a great phraseology either, but I wasn't going to read that entire rhyme that was for the letter V. That was just too far. All right. Wait, we looked at this one last week by mistake. We're not going to look at it again. We're going to go onward to this book. Oh, when you look, you tried to glance and read, but it was too blurry. Yeah, I imagine that somebody different at the publisher wrote them and somebody, somebody did the rhymes and somebody did the actual like recipes, but. So another new acquisition. Um, I'm gonna auto focus. I thought we were focused, but. Hopefully it's clearer and crisper. They're, the like previews that I have that are a bit delayed are really small on my screens. So I don't always know exactly what it looks like for you all. Um, how to cook it. Do, the bleh, bleh. Try that again. How to cook outdoors. Easy as one, two, three. Charcoal grilling, spit barbecuing, hickory smoking, sauces, and seasoning. This was one dollar, and this book is from Montgomery Ward. If you're not familiar with that name, just get a nice little description here so that I don't Sometimes when I try to give information from my memory, I then panic that I'm getting details wrong. So Montgomery Ward uh, yeah, just was double checking. It's a, a department store. <laughs> it's actually the name of two successive corporations, according to Wikipedia. But um, yeah, so this is a, it costs a dollar. It is an outdoor cookbook from Montgomery Ward. Skills for grills. I love the little illustrations. And then here they've got the illustration mixed with actual photography as well. Montgomery and Montgomery Ward and Company Incorporated, Chicago 7, Illinois. Um, this is again from 1957. How to use this barbecue book. Mail order catalog. Um, it was also, yeah, it was definitely a department store though. But I, do you believe they had a mail order catalog? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the divisions of Montgomery Ward were Electric Avenue, Ward's Kids, Montgomery Ward Catalog, and Montgomery Ward Auto Express. And, sorry, just reading Electric Avenue put the song in my head. Anyway, it's, I'm not going to sing it. Don't want DMCA strikes, not going to sing Electric Avenue. Started as mail order, then expanded to department stores like Sears and Roebuck. Okay. Um, so they have grill barbecuing, spit barbecuing, smoking, and barbecue extras. And in the table of contents, we have how to use this book. Description of equipment, before you light a fire, which is always a good place to start, before you create something that might kill you. Uh, 
fuel for the fire to start a barbecue fire, timing your barbecue. Steak, hot dogs, cheeseburgers, and hamburgers. Lamb, steaks, and chops. Pork chops, ribs, and ham steaks. Chicken halves, liver. Barbecued kebabs, game, fish and seafood. Uh, and then spit barbecuing, they have poultry and game, beef, lamb, pork and ham, fish. They have uh, two pages on smoking. And then barbecue extras, including salads, breads, vegetables, fruits, desserts, marinades, glazes, sauces, and relishes, and then the index. So if, if there's one of those you particularly want to look at, let me know. I'm, because I said at the beginning I would be looking at all the hot dogs and hamburgers, we will look at that. I'm also going to look at the game section. Um, just to see if there's anything particularly exotic. Because um, the game section is where we found the skunk recipes. Let's see, 26 and 27. So nothing really exotic. Um, <laughs> the game section. A hunting we did go. If you are the barbecue chef with freshly bagged game, a freezer full of game, or one looking for interesting new foods to barbecue, try the recipes below and on pages 27, 40, and 41. Here are a few basic rules to follow for the care of your game. Game should be cleaned and cooled as quickly as possible after shooting. Generally speaking, game should be allowed to firm up or age a few days to a few weeks before cooking. The amount of time will depend on the game. Bring all game to room temperature before barbecuing. And then they have recipes in here for rabbit, squirrel, wild duck, and venison. Somehow doubt that rock lobster is part of the game section. But then they also have small whole fish, so it may be. Um, no, fish and seafood was a different section. All right, page 16 is where we get hot dogs, hamburgers, and cheeseburgers. Ah, here we go. Hot dog jamboree. Kids love hot dogs and parties, so why not plan a hot dog barbecue party for the youngsters? And since hot dogs need only be heated through, let the kids prepare their own. Here are a few pointers for planning the party. Keep the menu simple, plan ahead, keep them busy. It's interesting to me that they have relegated sausages to children already. By 1957, hot dogs are, they're in here, they're talked about. We had James Beard just three years before saying that hot dogs were not respected as much as they should be and giving us 11 different ways to prepare them. Um, and he, every other book has said, hey, you know what's great and that kids love? Hot dogs! Hey, did you know hot dogs are only for kids? That's kind of the approach of all of the other cookbooks that we've seen. Um, no real recipes in this, just general cooking tips. Yeah, I think you're right. Although they do have a recipe here for the cheeseburgers. Um, the hot dogs, they just assume you're going to buy a pack of hot dogs and warm them up. And they're not giving you a recipe because they said, yeah, they don't take any work. The kids can do it themselves. Um, but they do give you a basic recipe here for beef with salt and pepper, add onion, and shape it into patties uh, for the cheeseburgers. Which is less of a recipe than we've had in the past. It doesn't have any binders. It doesn't have anything else added. It's just the meat with salt and pepper and onion. 
Hamburgers plain and fancy. Interesting. But it is really just a cookbook. It doesn't seem like they're selling any products. It's not like trying to get you to buy their grill. It's just recipes and information about grilling. Um, it's a dollar. I'm guessing this was meant to be like an add-on sale for when you bought the grill. It was like, hey, you just spent $30 on this charcoal kettle grill. How about this $1 book of recipes to go with it? That would be my guess of what this product was for. And actually, not a bad book. If you needed a book of barbecue recipes, not bad at all. We have another Spiral Bound, uh, another cost a dollar. This one is Big Boy Barbecue Book. Shows how easy it is to cook on spit or grill. Answers most common questions. How to build a fire? How much charcoal to use? When is food cooking? When is food done? Ah, when is food cooking? When is food done? You know, the general things that you need to know. How it all began. Oh my. <laughs> so, yeah, not a bad upsell product. Actually, a really quality one. For a dollar, that's, that's not bad at all, even at late 50s prices. Um, they have an illustration here of a caveman family uh, holding a piece of meat over a roaring flame that they're all leaning and, and staying back from. And then a woman cooking over a hearth, a woman cooking on an indoor stove, a woman cooking on a modern stove, and then a man holding a piece of meat on a barbecue fork above a roaring flame in an outdoor fireplace. So basically saying that they've everything's come full circle now that you're cooking outdoors. Uh, an interesting little bit of humor there. Um, a picture treasury of barbecuing, a tested recipe institute cookbook by the home economics staff of Tested Recipe Institute Incorporated. And with the co cooperation of barbecue experts of Big Boy Manufacturing Company. Table of contents, fun of barbecuing at home, all about how to build a fire, smoking for flavor, foil drip pans, how to use a spit, how to use a barbecue thermometer, barbecue sauces, steaks, chicken and other poultry, rabbit, beef roasts, economy beef quickies, pork and ham, lamb, liver and bacon, bratwurst and knockwurst, sh fish and seafood, shish kebab, Teenage treats, barbecued fruits and vegetables, breads, salads and desserts, care and cleaning, and index. The fun of barbecuing at home. They, they definitely have an illustrative style in this one. How to select barbecue equipment. Important features to look for. This is... Uh, one that we haven't covered. Uh, high quality heavy duty steel for durable construction of firebox, brazier, legs, and hood. Comfortable working height of the barbecuing surface. Heavy duty legs braced by a one piece service shelf. Large heavy duty wheels with bushings and heavy duty axles to permit ease in moving equipment to the barbecue area. Grill made of steel with copper nickel and chrome finish and closely spaced rods. Heavy duty spit assembly with a heavy duty motor which rotates 6 RPM clockwise for proper self basting. Spit rods should be about 3 8 inch square. Spit forks should be made of heavy spring steel. Rod and forks should have copper nickel and chrome finish. 
You still have not found a barbecue sauce that you actually love. You have one that you like, but in general, sauces are not your thing. Yeah, I, I don't know that I've found one that I actually really love either. But then again, I said I don't eat barbecue a lot. <laughs> Mechanism for raising or lowering grill or firebox should have positive type action and be sturdy and well constructed. Never buy a makeshift mechanism as it may result in spoiling expensive meats. Quality hood of stainless steel or heavy duty bonderized cold rolled steel. This type of hood ensures a maximum of reflected heat for best results. It should extend beyond the center of the grilling area and the spit should be mounted, not in front of, but well inside the hood. This type of hood also protects the meats from wind. Uh, will keep them barbecuing evenly and will ensure maximum retention of juices. <clears throat> you know what I haven't seen in these books? Pizza. I know barbecue pizza is a thing. Like, not barbecue pizza as in pizza with barbecue sauce, but pizza made on a charcoal barbecue grill I know is a thing. But I've not seen it yet in any of these books. <laughs> they have a brand name in here. I don't think it's like a paid advertisement, but I just noticed it as I was flipping the page. Uh, so, for the fire. Gravel, charcoal briquettes, big boy fire starters, electro rod, golden flame starter, and easy light starter. Um, so, big boy being the brand, but easy light is definitely one that I remember from my youth. And it's not diesel fuel. Gave up and made some early dinner. <laughs> not hamburgers, though. <laughs> facts about charcoal briquettes, facts about other charcoals, use of gravel. Golden flame starter. Use Easy light starter, a wax-like substance in a small paper cup. So that is not the same as the easy light that I'm familiar with is like the squeeze bottle stuff. So apparently not the same product. Instructions, instructions, lots of instructions for building your fires, which is important. How to use the spit. This book you can clearly see has been used. Yes, Big Boy did uh, sponsor the book, so not surprising to see product placement for them in the book. Um, but you can definitely see uh, here on the spices or sauces page, um, the book has been used. Um, how do you like your steak? The, uh, the page that helps you determine whether it's rare, medium, or well done is itself well done. In fact, the portion where they give you an illustration of what a well done steak looks like, one could say has been overdone. Uh, the page itself has been torn out and slightly burned. So, <laughs> well used book here. I just keep seeing Big Boy and it makes me think of a restaurant chain, uh, Bob's Big Boy, and I have no idea if it's any relation to this company uh, that made these grilling um, tools or not. Chicken halves in the spit basket, barbecued turkey. They, th whoever used this book, it doesn't seem like they did much with um, chicken, squab, rabbit. Uh, these pages do not seem to have been used very much. The rotisserie portion of the book does not seem like it has been used much. Pineapple glazed ham, spare ribs, lamb chops, leg of lamb. 
It does seem like we've we've hit no relation. Thank you, DJ Phoenix. It's just what comes to mind when I see those words because it was a place we used to go when I was a kid. Caesar salad, golden potato salad. Barbecue quiz. A good barbecue chef can complete can complete seven out of ten of these statements. One, constant self-basting of the chickens, which you have only in spit barbecue. Constant self-basting of the chickens, which you have only in spit barbecuing, makes chicken blank, blank, and blank. See page 29. I do not know the answer. Page 29. Constant self-basting of the chickens, which you have only in spit barbecuing, makes chicken succulent, tender, and brown. If meat is done before serving time, lower the firebox to the lowest position to keep the meat hot without further cooking. It cooks only when blank bubble on the blank. It cooks only when Oh, am I page twenty seven. I was looking at page I was looking further than that. It cooks only when juices bubble on the surface. <laughs> so it's definitely like a, the quiz is, did you read our book? <laughs> and since I did not, I don't know the answers, but an, an, a cute idea to have the quiz at the end there. <coughs> All right, we have the Better Homes and Gardens barbecue book, complete how-to for new outdoor and indoor cooking fun. More than 250 tempting over the coals recipes. I'm gonna say 1950s still. Oh, this is the same book we had before, just newer. It was given to Ken from the Frannies, something like that, uh, for Christmas in 1960. This is from 1958. Fourth printing, first edition, Published by Meredith Publishing Company, Des Moines, Iowa. Slightly updated food styling pictures, but this is the same book. We have the same family from earlier with their bow and quiver. So not gonna spend a bunch of time in it, uh, same book, updated version. I literally just pulled entire sections from our, um, from our shelves, because uh, there is a certain range of call numbers that we have that basically got me barbecuing stuff. All right, we have the joy of grilling with a special section on patio parties. Um, it is stamped with a stamp that says, please call and ask for Mike Berry. I have no idea when in its life that stamp was added or for what purpose. <clears throat> but there's a cute little illustration here. It's a rather large family. They have a dog and a cat. And unless there are some neighbor kids over there, they've got 
four kids, five kids? Considering the uh, late 50s was the time when the American family was supposed to be mom, dad, and two and a half kids, five kids is quite a few. Um, this is 1959. Welcome to the fun and efficient world of gas grilling. The joy of grilling is your guidebook to new happy times outdoors under the sun or stars. Whether it's a party or just a casual family meal, the outdoor setting makes for relaxation because a gas grill is fun to use. It tends to get everybody in the family outdoors more and to spend more time together. It's all fun time too because there is no bother with charcoal. <clears throat> in these energy conscious days, you may be wondering about the energy used in outdoor cooking. Studies show gas grills cost less to operate and use less primary energy than charcoal or electric grills. Cooking summertime meals on a gas grill is wise use of energy because little or no cooking is necessary indoors. Your entire meal can be cooked on the grill with no additional load put on air conditioning equipment. You'll find inspiration galore for entertaining in the patio parties section and recipes in great variety throughout the book. Toward the end, you'll find specific suggestions about the use and care of your gas grill, plus numerous helpful grilling tips. May we suggest that you take a few minutes to read this section first, then start grilling. You'll have fun. <clears throat> Minigasco Con Consumer Services, Outstate Minnesota, uh, Iowa, Nebraska, South Dakota, so Minigasco, I believe, is a gas company. Um, and I do believe that that is their logo. Um, or was their logo. So yeah, they are now Centerpoint Energy. And they still operate in Minnesota. And yes, that um, the indigenous person with a flame headband uh, was Minigasco's logo. It is very cutely drawn. Probably had no indigenous input into the use of them as a logo. But 1959, historical document. Um, hot off the grill. So we've got various <coughs> hash brown potato burgers, North Woods burgers, grilled mustard steak, sassy ham slice, sassy ham slice. Uh, on the rotisserie, we've got glazed corned beef, barbecue glaze, honey pineapple bacon roll, <coughs> items cooked in foil, red hot apples, apples, brown sugar, oh my gosh. I'm going to read this one because I'm not sure. I like cinnamon and apples. This seems a bit much to me. Six large red apples, six tablespoons of brown sugar, four tablespoons of red cinnamon candies, so red hots, um, two tablespoons of lemon juice, 12 pineapple chunks, whipped cream, sweetened, cinnamon, optional. Wash and core apples, leaving bottom intact to a depth of one half inch. Cut top edge of peel to make a scalloped design. Fill cavities with brown sugar, candies, 
lemon juice, and pineapple chunks. Wrap apples individually in double thickness of heavy-duty aluminum foil. Cook on preheated, ga preheated gas grill using medium flame for 30 to 40 minutes or until done. Serve with sweetened whipped cream and cinnamon if desired. Serves six. I've definitely had cinnamon apples prepared in that way, but not with cinnamon red hots, red hot candies um, used in the preparation. That seems like too much to me. Um, but I would have to try it to know whether it just makes for a more cinnamony apple or, or not. Um, those candies can get really hot and, and some people are really sensitive to like the cinnamon heat. Um, so that just struck me as unusual. Thirst aids. Yeah, cinnamon red hots just seem a little a little overkill for it. Um, patio parties. I love this. We always see illustrations of people grilling outdoors in the summer. This book has an, a side-by-side -side illustration of people grilling outside in the summer and in the winter. Um, which in particular I find interesting because this book is from Minnegasco, which is a Minnesota gas company. Um, and so showing that you can do things outside in the winter um, feels very uh, on point for Minnesota. Um, I, I lived in Minnesota for about a decade. Uh, and people do, people eat on outdoor patios in the winter in Minnesota. They have little space heaters that go up and you'll have a space heater um, next to your table. But, but people still go and like do outdoor table seating in the middle of winter in Minnesota. So, um, wait, the baby's missing in the winter picture? So is the cat. They've only got three of the kids in the winter picture. And the cat is also gone. It's like the spot the difference things, the side by side picture. We do lose one of the children in the summer picture in the side by side as well. It was a rough six months. <laughs> but no, I just thought it was interesting because um, I think most parts of the country wouldn't think to show outdoor um, activities in the winter, like this kind of activity in the winter. But um, from my personal experience having lived in Minnesota, people would absolutely have a backyard barbecue in the middle of winter in Minnesota. So, uh, including that illustration seems like a very Minnesota thing to do to me. That, that's all. Um, again, we have outdoor, outdated language, um, 1959, uh, generally today we would not use the word, um, the O word there. We would use Asian or something else uh, instead. Brunch, avocado grapefruit salad, teriyaki appetizers, Midwest wingding, roast capon, Hiawatha land. Oh, why is Kira not here? Why? Why? I'm going to have to tell Kira about this. We have a recipe for roast capon. And um, so if, if any of you have happened to be watching uh, my video game streams on my personal channel back in say January, I wanna say, when I was playing video games from like 
1979, 1980-ish, um, we had a joke about European roast capon. Uh, so the fact that we have a recipe here for roast capon Hiawatha land, uh, just the, strikes me as interesting, that's all. It was a joke based on um, Kentucky Fried Chicken, except th the video game was um, the original Ultima One game, and uh, we were just, it was a goof, but the goof was European Fried Capon. Uh, so roast capon in this book. Anyway, explaining jokes doesn't make them funnier. Um, we have a gas grill fact sheet how it works, how to light it, how to use it. And this is who you're supposed to call and ask for Mike Berry. You're supposed to call Minigasco. Sportsman's luck menu, pheasant, pike. Interesting. The only proteins, the only like hunting items on the sportsman's luck menu are pheasant and pike. Children's frolic. We get hot dogs again. Baked beans, coleslaw, s'mores. Winter cookout menu. Outdoor hot chocolate, chili supper dish, creamy lime mold. Parsley cheese bread, marble bunt cake, and orange sherbet. Yes, yes, DJ Phoenix. That is um, Mike Berry was with Minigasco's marketing department, it looks like, um, and would have been who the original owner was supposed to contact about their gas service. Perfect endings. We have a strawberry pie. Rotist apples and orange sauce. I think that's supposed to be rotisserie. Cake s'mores. A whole section on use and care tips for the gas grill. Grilling guide, recipe, recipe index would have been nice to have seen earlier. Oh, and we have the full winter picture in color on the back. And in the full winter picture, we have four of the children. The baby is not out in the snow. And neither is the cat. But this uh, child here on the left had, had disappeared um, in the side-by-side -side in actually both pictures. Um, and in the summer picture, that child's holding a can of pop or soda, but in this being the Midwest, it would be pop. Um, and then on the back cover in the winter picture, hot chocolate. Never in your life owned a gas grill. Um, uh, the main difference between a gas grill and a charcoal grill really is the um, flavor that is imparted by the charcoal. So the smoke that comes off of charcoal will impart flavor to your food, whereas a natural gas grill is is flavorless it doesn't add any sort of flavor to what you're cooking so that's the main difference as far as like cooking efficiency i believe the gas is supposed to be more efficient it's supposed to be easier like it's supposed i, I don't know which one is more environmental environmentally friendly but it's supposed to be faster to cook with the gas than it is with the charcoal because you don't have the heat up time you just go and turn it on and it's on um, but the charcoal gives added flavor 
to what you're cooking that the gas does not impart. So, um, well, we made it to 1959 <laughs> and it is 431, um, which means that we've reached the end of the stream time for today. Um, I'm going to check and see who we're going to raid. Uh, if they're live, you probably know who will raid. Um, just going to look and see. Charcoal adds flavor but can cook unevenly. Gas cooks evenly but doesn't add any flavor. All right. Um... Do, do, do. They are live. I think we will go over there because we like to raid them. They're a nice, calming, chill stream for the end of the day. We will be heading over. Um, Subi Doby, it has been lovely having you here um, uh, every Wednesday. Uh, I'll just, should do the like closeout stuff. Let me set up the raid first real quick. Um, We will be going to the Monterey Bay Aquarium. They are uh, showing the moon jellyfish cam today. So if you have problems with jellyfish, just fair warning that that is what we will be going into. Um, but thank you all for coming. Uh, again, I'm Anthony Wright de Hernandez. I'm the Community Collections Archivist here at Virginia Tech. Um, every Wednesday from 2.30 to 4.30 p.m. Eastern, uh, Eastern Daylight Time currently, but Eastern Time, um, I do a stream uh, where I share something from our special collections and university archives here at Virginia Tech. Um, and that stream goes out both to the VTUL Studios channel, that is uh, twitch.tv slash VTUL Studios, uh, which is short for Virginia Tech University Libraries Studios, um, as well as to twitch.tv slash Rogan27, which is my personal Twitch channel. Um, and yeah, it would be lovely to have you come back uh, and see you again. I'm going to go ahead and start these raids uh, from both channels over to the Monterey Bay Aquarium um, for their moon jellyfish cam. Um, it's always a, a, a lovely calming thing to have on in the background while you're doing other things. Um, and yeah, so that's where we will head. Uh, again, thanks everybody for coming and I will see you next time. Bye.